Welcome back to my Robotino tutorial. Um, today I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the math functions you can do with the Robotino, how it can handle numbers. You know, numbers can exist in many fashion. They can be floating point numbers, which are full decimal points. They can be integers, which are numbers that don't have decimal points, or they can be Boolean. Boolean numbers are only one or zero. They're discrete. They're either true or false. Um, all the math functions for the Robotino are, connected, are, collect, are collected in this folder here called math. We've got all the arithmetic operators like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and we have comparisons down here. Uh, we also have functions and arrays, which we'll leave for a later, later tutorial. Let's have a look at how we can actually use numbers. First of all, we've got to generate them. So to generate numbers, several ways of doing that. One way is to create a constant. So you can go over here, create a constant. Um, and using this tool, you can put any number you want, one, two, zero, hit enter. And you can see I have uh, the values turned on. So if you go view, show connector values, you too will show a value right here. So this is a constant. This number never changes until you actually physically change it yourself. 258, you see it comes up there. Another kind of an output you can have is an, as a, uh, an arbitrary waveform generator. So if you look at the arbitrary waveform generator, you can see right here, if I double click on it, it's producing a number between, in this case, zero and one, and it's taken 100 milliseconds to make that change. It's a triangle wave, it's a, it's a linear wave. Let's take this thing and slow it down to be 1000 milliseconds or one second. You can see it climbing better. I can change the amplitude to whatever I want it to be. Let's say 24 volts. There's a nice industrial voltage. And you can see here the voltage going from zero to 24 volts. Um, you can also make it a sine wave if you like. There's a sine wave going from zero to 24 volts or a cosine wave or a square wave. So you can do all different kinds of waveforms with the arbitrary waveform generator. You can also use the timer. The timer is simply a clock. You can see here it counts up in milliseconds. So uh, the timer will start at zero and start counting as soon as this, this step is being executed and keep counting up continuously. And it will be reset when you leave the step and come back to it. It could also be reset if you were to uh, put a Boolean one in here, that would automatically reset it as well. There's the random number generator you can see right here. And the random number generator goes in this case between zero and one and produces just a random number. Um, let's see if I was to take my constant down here and I was to type, punch it into the, the upper value. Now it goes between zero and 258. So the random number generator produces a random number between zero and 258. Okay, we'll just lose that connection. Put this constant up, which we're up, well, where we can look at it later. Here's the, here's a variable. This is a slider. Now the slider produces a number based on the position of this. So you can see I can now go from 100 to zero or anywhere in between. It's a nice way for me to control it manually. If I right click on the slider and look at properties, you can see I can change the maximum number and the minimum number. So let's say I was to go from minus 100 to plus 125 okay there we go close that up and now you can see i can go from minus 100 here to plus 125 so i got infinite control over uh, the kind of floating point number i want to produce with my slider now we can take these numbers of course and we can we can do any mathematical operation we want let's try an addition so i'm going to take this number this constant right here and i'll take this variable right here, and I'll tie them to the two, two inputs of my adder. So if I put this number here, it's a floating point input, and put this floating point input there, you'll see that the output 264 is 258 plus six. And as I change this number here, it gets larger. So here we have 125. So 258 plus 125 is 383. So we can add two numbers together, we can divide numbers, we can multiply numbers, and we can subtract numbers using these functions. You also have comparison functions. We can have a look at those comparison functions right now very quickly, get rid of my basic math functions. Um, 
The comparison checks the two inputs, and if they're equal in this case, you'll get a true. So here, I connect those two guys, and we notice 258 and 125 are not equal, so we have a false. And if I was to move my slider, well, I'm not going to be able to make it 258 because I can't go that high. Well, let's take my constant here, and we'll make it lower. Let's make it 75. Okay, so that's 75, and I make this one 75. It's very hard to do. Oh, it doesn't quite want to jump to 75. Well, we'll make this one 74. There we go. 74 here, 74 there. They're equal. All right, that's the e equality. Uh, greater than... Okay, so connect the slider to the, the uh, lower input. Now you can see here that the top one, true, is greater than the bottom one. 74 is greater than 44, so the output's true. And if I was to move this higher than 74, the output's false. So I have greater than, greater than or equal to, uh, not equal to, less than, or less than or equal to. These are all the basic uh, math functions we can use to, uh, to, to program to control our robot with. So what I'd like you to do is ring up Robotino View and try out these math functions, see how they work for you.